James chapter 1, verse 18. Of his own will beget he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Amen. So may God bless you. You may be seated. Uh, like to greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here with you this morning. Uh, as Brother Brooke said, I've known him for a few years now. He has been to our country several times. I remember when he came the first time we were in a little classroom. Uh, would be maybe as big as this place, but slightly smaller. And uh, we were few. But uh, we really had a blessed service. And the next time when he came, we we are now in our own building, and uh, we thank God. He has been a blessing to us through uh, his singing and through his preaching, mostly, and uh, the things that he preached in our country left a very strong impression on our hearts. Amen. And uh, we thank our brother. He is one of the best examples we have in the message. And we really appreciate what the Lord has done in his life. And we appreciate his family. Uh, I appreciate the family I'm staying with them. Amen. And I uh, appreciate the atmosphere in the home. Amen. And uh, so I bring you greetings from our church in Soweto. And uh, my family, I only have two girls. That's what the Lord has blessed me with. I would have loved to have uh, many more children, more than that. I really love children, but I'm happy with what the Lord has given me. One pastor from Congo, uh, after he got married, after, the, you know, they had children after many years of marriage. And, uh, you know, in Africa, that is a reproach if you don't have children. Uh, so people were talking and so on. He said, well, when I married my wife, I just saw her not with children around her. <laughs> First of all, and second to that, I don't want no serpent seed in my house. I want children that I'll go to the rapture with. <laughs> said, my, that's something. <laughs> so, uh, but we, we really thank God for children. We thank God for brothers and sisters of like precious faith. Uh, now, I was asking Brother Brooks several times uh, how long should I speak and he doesn't want to tell me. Because uh, there is a saying in Africa, I'm just saying these things just to, to ease my nerves. I'll tell you why uh, I I don't travel much. Uh, I do travel a lot within South Africa, but most of the time I'm home. So it's easy to preach at home because I just tell them, eh, we are going to continue. <laughs> so I can say that today, amen, I can say that to you now, now the most difficult part for me is to start. But I will start. I was still saying to you that, you know, uh, they say, there's a saying, there's few sayings there in Africa because, you know, there's uh, one problem that we have in Africa, uh, not all of Africa. Some of us, we have tried to come out of it. But uh, it's a hard thing to keep time in Africa. <laughs> Very difficult thing. So, uh, especially in weddings, People will say, okay, we'll start at 9 o'clock, and they come after four hours. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but I, I, I was early on my wedding. Amen. I came on time, and my wife came on time. Amen. So, God was, help, was, was gracious to us. So, uh, now, one white man was saying to uh, this other Hosa uh, man, 
Hosa is uh, Mandela's tribe. Uh, that is Hosa's. So we asked him, but why you people can't keep time? He said, listen, we invented this thing. And we control this thing. This thing doesn't control us. <laughs> but uh, I believe that when it comes to the things of God, time matters. Amen. So today, we are just going to speak on a subject. Uh, just one word, fatherhood. Amen. That's what we are going to talk about. Fatherhood. I was saying to Brother Brooks, it's amazing. Brother Brenham, talk, uh, I mean, he preached a sermon and he titled it Mother's Day, but he never said anything about Father's Day. But uh, we know he said a lot about Father. Amen. Show us the Father and all those messages. Amen. So uh, we, we are very grateful. Amen. That we have a heavenly Father. Amen. And Brother Brenham says he didn't just uh, create things and uh, left them as they are. Amen. Amen. He's interested in what he created. Amen. Amen. He's very much interested in us. Amen. Amen. Very much interested in us. To a point that he doesn't leave us. The Bible says he doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. Amen. Brother Brenham says Israel forsook the rock, but the rock never forsook them. Imagine, we, we, even when we backslide, God doesn't leave us. He goes with you to those places where you go. He's right there. Amen. Uh, he even told Jacob, I'll never leave you until I fulfilled everything that I've spoken about you. Amen. So he followed Jacob all the way to Laban's place everywhere. When Jacob was cheat, uh, cheating Laban, that's a strange fellow. He went there. He, he had nothing, but when he came out, he was uh, richer than his master. <laughs> there are people like that. Amen. You know, they, 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 they work, and all they do is just steal and steal. And, and, and if you are not careful, they can uh, uh, bring the whole company to, uh, you know, they can bring it down. Yeah. The whole company can be bankrupt because of them. Amen. But God never left him. Even when he was doing all those things right in that place, right in that condition, God spoke to him Amen. to come back. Amen. Amen. And Jacob had to come back. So he doesn't leave us. Amen. So we, we are very grateful to have a father like that. Amen. Amen. Now, as we start now, yeah. It's, uh, uh, James says, of his own will, he beget us. Amen. With the word of truth. Amen. You know, we come to this world by the will of God. Amen. No one chose where he wanted to be born. Amen. Amen. God decided those things. Yes. No one decided that I want to be a boy, I wanted to be a girl. Amen. God decided that. Amen. Amen. There's many families that are sitting with girls. And they don't have boys. You know, like my mother-in-law, her, her tribe, she's a, a, the, the prophet calls them Bazutas, but is Basutus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, in that tribe, when you get married, uh, the family that uh, you are married in, they will give you a name. So, her name is uh, Madanie, which means the mother of Daniel. Guess what? My mother-in-law doesn't have a son. She, she's got four girls. Till today, they're still calling her Madanier. So, uh, you know, the wish never brought Daniel. Amen. The wish never brought Daniel. They wish that he had a son, that he would have a son, and he would call his name Daniel, but Daniel is not here. He, she can't call for Daniel because Daniel is not here. Amen. So you can imagine they had that desire to have a son and they would have called him Daniel. He's not there. The wish can't bring him here. Amen. Amen. It had to take the actual birth to bring Daniel here. Amen. So we see that, you know, uh, they wanted to have a boy but they have girls. And others have boys 
and they don't have girls, and they wish to have a girl, and they don't have any girls. And others, they wish to have children, they don't have children. So we didn't even come here by the desires of our parents. But we came here by the will of God. Amen. God, at his own time, he decided that you would be born in this country, in this family, and so on. And no matter what, you had to be born at that time. Nothing could stop that. Amen. So, the will of God is very powerful. And even when it comes to the new birth, you know, it, we, we, we are not born again according to our own will. No. As much as, you know, I couldn't choose to be taller than what I am. Amen. Or to be broader than what I am. Amen. I had to, I mean, God decided all those things. Amen. And uh, same thing here, when it comes to the new birth, it is God who decides. Amen. Amen. And, and yeah. we are born again by his word of truth. Yeah. Word of truth. Amen. Word of truth. So any man's ideas won't work for us. That cannot bring any new birth death. But it has to take God to give the word, to reveal the word in that age. Yeah. No, you cannot even be born again, you know, by the message of Luther in this age. No, 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 no. Okay, let me, let me just uh, say it like this. We know uh, Aaron had a bless, breastplate. Now, that breastplate of Aaron, it had 12 stones. So, and there's 12 tribes of Israel. So every Israelite is born under one of those stones. So it's either you are the tribe of Reuben or Benjamin or whatever tribe you are, but you are born under a stone. Those are Jews now. That's Israel now. But when it comes to the Gentiles, we are born again under a star. Right? So, those who lived in the times of Paul in the age of Ephesus, there was no way for you to be born again any other way but through that message. Under that star. All the way down to this age that we are living in. I tell you, even when we were in the Pentecostal churches, we were not born again. No, it was not a birth. It was a false birth because there's no truth there. There's no word of truth. If there is... Then the question is, what are you doing here then? You better go back. But we came out because there's no truth there. Amen. And, uh, and everything was just false. False water baptism. False new birth. False pastors. False everything is false. False church. Everything was just false. Amen. But now, when, when we come under the word of our day... That's the only time that we can be truly born again. Amen. Where your life is exactly like the life of God. Amen. Amen. Like I normally say, if they say this message is so false, how can a false message produce such pure lives? You know, like uh, in Africa, that's the only hope we have. Our politics are messed up. Everything is messed up. And everything that came to us, you know, uh, when it came from anywhere, from Europe, the Lutheran gospel, when it came from Europe, it was already a denomination by the time it reached Africa. You know, you, even the, the, the Pentecostals here, yeah, it was already a denomination. When, when the Assemblies of God and them came down there, it was already a denomination. But the only thing that came to us that was never a denomination, it was this message. Amen. Amen. And, it is, and it is throughout the whole world the only hope. That we have is this message of the hour. Amen. We have seen God change lives. We have seen God change homes. Amen. There's, uh, uh, it, it cannot be disputed. Amen. So, but you see, the message of Noah was the will of God. But in the time of Moses, it was the word of God. But it was not the will of God in the time of Moses. 
reading it, yes, it is the word of God. But trying to build an ark and cross the Red Sea, that's not the will of God. So God's will for the day was to open the sea. Not cross over it with an ark, no. So building an ark in the days of Moses, it was not the will of God. Yes, it is the word of God, but it was the word of it was the will of God in the times of Noah. Amen. So we realize that in the days of Moses, God had a plan for that day. He told Abraham that your seed will sojourn in a strange land, and when they are they, they are in that strange land, I will visit them and I'll take them out with a mighty hand. So we know how they went there and how Joseph was sold. And, uh, and I tell you, brother, sister, sometimes our, the people that we think they are our enemies, those people, they are the ones that we need in our lives. You know, the people that love you, they are, they are wonderful. It's wonderful to be loved. And every one of us wants to be loved. It's good to have people who love you. Amen. It soothes you. It encourages you and all that. But we need negative people. Amen. I mean, the, 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 the brothers of Joseph never loved Joseph. But because of that hatred, they were, they were helping Joseph to fulfill the purpose that jo God had about the life of Joseph. If he had people who just loved him and who, who never hated him, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have you know, come to a place where his life fulfilled the will of God. So he needed these people who hated him. And I think we also need people who hate us. Yeah. Brother, sister, it's not an easy thing to say, but that's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. So they hated him. They never loved him. And, uh, and they sold him. Amen. And uh, uh, to the Midianites. And the Midianites sold him to Pontifar. It's like he's getting further away from the dreams. Amen. Because, yeah, his brothers, they are left behind. Amen. And his father is left behind. Well, they sold him to the Midianites. But when the Midianites sold him to Pontifa, his brothers didn't know about that. But that didn't bother Joseph. What a strong testimony we have from this life. I mean, at the age of 17, that's when all these things happened to him. He came to a country where he was the only Christian. Everybody doesn't worship God. He, he, he couldn't even, you know, fellowship with no one. He couldn't even, you know, uh, uh, sing hymns with no one. He was all by himself throughout the whole country. But in it all, amen, God's grace kept him. One time I was looking at, uh, you know, they, 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 there's a certain documentary they made and they, were, uh, they, they, they invented a little camera they put they put it on the back of birds and then they also put it on the back of an eagle just to see how they fly and all that and as this eagle was flying a storm came up very powerful storm but they noticed something that the eagle went through the storm even the storm didn't divert it from its course it went right through it i said praise god Amen. There is eagles right here in the scripture. One of them is Joseph. All the things that happened in his life never diverted his course. He still, he still remained true and faithful to God. I said, Lord, help me to be strong like that. My trials, my testing, my, my everything that comes my way, may I never, never lose the vision of Jesus. May I still stay focused. So, brother, sister, may God help us. Amen. Amen. And I believe that, you know, everything that comes our way, we will be able to master it. Amen. Amen. We can master anything that comes our way. So, Joseph stayed faithful. They sold him. He came into Pontifa's house. Pontifa saw that God is with him. And he made him a steward in his house. He was an overseer of everything there, and uh, uh, 
God bless the home of Pontifa because of Joseph. And I believe, brother and sister, this same God of this Bible is the same today. Amen. All these places are blessed because we are still here. Amen. Amen. It may not look that way. Yeah. It may not sound that way. It may, be, it may seem like all these prominent names, you know, in the political realm and, and, and business and all that, they are the ones who are running things here. No, things are happening because we are here. Amen. Because of we are here. Amen. God is blessing places because we are here. The way, the day we leave this place is going to be chaos here. Amen. I mean, these people, the weapons that they have and the hatred that they have and, you know, when they are far from God and they don't even believe there's God. But there's something that is keeping them not to blow each other. Amen. Because we are here. You can even read it in the book of Revelation. Amen. Chapter 7. God didn't just hold the four wings only for the 144,000. He is holding it because there's a bride also here. Because we are here. Amen. God must still do something in us. He must still seal those who don't have the Holy Ghost. He must still save those who are without God. Amen. That's why we are still here. Can I say something here to encourage us? You know, brother, sister, it's amazing. Uh, let's take, for an example, a peach tree. A peach tree, it blossoms all at the same time. Those little flowers, they become little peaches at the same time. But you know what? You won't eat all those peaches at the same time from that tree. Not from another tree. Same tree. There will be those who will get ripe first. You eat those first. The others are still there. You eat those who become sick. They are still green, some of them. And it's amazing. It's, it's a paradox. They are on the same tree, same nourishment, same sun, same everything. They, they should be ripe at the same time. But no, it doesn't work like that. So we might be in the same church, same message, but we don't mature at the same time. Amen. Some of us are not yet ripe. Amen. It doesn't mean that they won't get ripe. Some are in and out of church. It seems like they are not settled. But brother, sister, there's something that pulls them in. There's something about a true child of God. When the word is spoken, something happens in their soul. Though there might be fightings in the mind and, uh, and battles here and there and so on. But the word of God has got an effect on a child of God. They can't deny it. They can't resist it. They can't deny it. They may not have surrendered now, but it's just a matter of time. Amen. It's just a matter of time. So, we see that Joseph, in the house of Pontifa, God wanted him higher than that. Now, with God, the way up is down. So, they had to take him out. Sometimes we get mad, we get angry when we are falsely accused. But it happened. It even happened to Joseph. The wife of Pontifa was after him. So it shows that money and riches and all those is not all uh, that life is about. Here is a woman a wife of a very rich man and he's after a Hebrew boy who doesn't own nothing. So there was something that Joseph had that the husband didn't have. There was something. She saw something in this young man. But then she goes after Joseph and so on and Joseph resisting that. And one day they were they, Joseph went there and there were, they, they were just two in the house. And she grabbed Joseph. You can imagine. I mean, paints and all those things, they come from Egypt. Okay? Maybe she dressed in a sexy way and Joseph never saw that. Painted her eyes, uh, you know, her, her lips green and then purple and this color and that color. Joseph doesn't notice all those things. 
Then it had, she realized, no, 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 no. Then I have to do it physically. And she grabbed him. He left his jacket. And he ran away. Then he appeared before this judge. And the judge held his jacket. Son, is this jacket part of that trouser that you are wearing? Yes, sir. This jacket and that, uh, that jacket and this trouser, it's a suit. Okay. So on such a day you were there. Yes. Now this thing is over. The boy is guilty. You know, uh, then he was uh, uh, sentenced. Attempt at rape. That was the case. Now he couldn't argue that. No, he couldn't argue that. But he answered with his life. There are times you cannot, you know, brother, sister, God help us. We cannot answer everyone. Amen. We don't know owe everyone an answer. Amen. But the life, yes. our life, before every man must be a godly life. Amen. Let's answer with our lives. Amen. So Joseph was falsely accused and there he is. Now he ends up right in dungeon. If there was a man who was supposed to give up on God, this was a man. But he never understood what was going on. But somehow, election held. Election held. Something kept him. Amen. Like Brother Brenham says, I, 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 I want God to keep me. So that when I cannot hold on anymore, he can hold me. Those times they come. Those times they come. But uh, Joseph, he continued on. He came into prison. He was not with, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind men. He was with men of terrible spirits. Right in prison, the, the head of prison realized, no, God is with Joseph. Joseph has got a better control over these spirits than I. So he must be in charge of the prison. So he was in charge and he was controlling everything and, and uh, because Joseph had come, there's no gang uh, uh, fights and all those things. And, and you know, we, he was in control. And we know the story about the dreams. Hey, Amen. And because of those dreams and he interpreted the dreams, it took another two years. <laughs> the butler forgot him. It took another two years. But God took him out from down there and he became the second in charge Amen. in Egypt. Pontiphas' wife under Joseph. Yeah, 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 yeah. Under Joseph. Hey. He, could, he, he could have revenged him. He, he could have done all sorts of things. But brother, sister, because he is a child of God, yeah. vengeance, it was not even in his mind. Everything under his feet, prison, you name it, even the very judge that sentenced him yeah. under him. I tell you, one of these days it will happen. Hallelujah. Yes, brother, sister, it will happen. Amen. Amen. I believe it. I believe it. It may not look like that now. That everything is under our feet. But, brother, sister, we are getting there. Amen. We are getting there. Every child of God must come to that point. I was telling the church... Let me not say that. That's just a message on his own. Let me leave it. I still feel that I should say it. You know, Brother Brenham says, uh, Brother Brenham said in a uh, stage of a perfect man. I think it's uh, paragraph 172 uh, where he says, I just paraphrase the thing. He said, uh, He's trying his best that every member of the tabernacle must become this message. Now, when we talk about every member of the tabernacle, now, Brother Brenham's tabernacle is not the Brenham tabernacle. You remember very well how God told him, that's not your tabernacle. Amen. Amen. So we are here, we are part of Brother Brenham's tabernacle. Whether so it wherever we are, part of that. So I said, you see, I saw something there that every member. Now when we talk about every member, we're not talking about the elderly people only. Even Sunday school is included. Every one of us must become 
the message. My life, your life, everybody's life. You know, uh, 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 the reason why I stand behind the desk is that people should become the message. Not only that, if you go a little bit backwards, then he said he is not sent to build an organization. But he is sent to build an individual to become a powerhouse. Yes. Amen. Now, under the message, we don't follow this man because he's got an anointing, no. or we follow that one because he, he is the anointed man and yes. that one. No! Every one of us must become powerhouses. Amen. Powerhouses. Amen. Even these little fellows right in Sunday school, they must become powerhouses. So it's not just supposed to be me as a pastor or a pastor Isaiah or, or, or any minister, you know, brother Troy or whosoever. No! Every one of us. Brother, sister, it's not only men, even women. Even women. You know, brother Brenham speaks of a sister in the message... Uh, the sixth sense. This sister, she had a dream and the devil came to her making all the funny faces and she said, get out of here. And told Brother Brenham, Brother Brenham gave the interpretation. The prophet says, uh, there she was in the home with her husband. They would be killed and it's not a problem. But in times like that, that's when Moses was born. He was an answer to prayer. And not just an answer to prayer, but born to fulfill the word of God. When God spoke to Abraham, the prophet says, God had Moses in mind. So God doesn't just speak the word. No, he's got people who already fulfill that word. Part of the word is spoken, part of it written, part of it is us. Amen. Amen. Part of it is us. Like when the Bible says, in the beginning was the word. It was not the written word. It was not even the spoken word. It was the living word. The living word spoke the word. For us to speak the word, we must be the living word. Amen. So every day God is just putting word upon word upon word. And every day we are getting better. We are getting better every day. Amen. That's why, brother, sister, I, I, I used to worry a lot and so on, but I don't worry no more. Amen. Brother Brenham says, you know, our duty is to plant the seed. God will take care of it. Amen. 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 So some people, you, you labor on them, you talk to them and so on, then they argue and they fuss and so on. But, you know, it's coming from here. But the word is for here. Amen. 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 So they may be arguing from here, but deep down here, something else is happening. Amen. And at the right time, that word, amen, it has to bring forth. Amen. So we see that, you know, Pharaoh killing the children and so on, and Moses was born at that time. The Bible says the parents of Moses, they were not afraid of the king. Now, Moses was a normal baby. He, he also cried the whole night. They had sleepless nights and so on. But the Bible says they were not afraid. Where there's fear, there's no faith. Where there's faith, there's no fear. So they were not afraid. They knew that this boy is born to fulfill the scriptures. So you can imagine at night. Moses is crying and maybe he's teething or whatever the problem is. And he's crying and crying. And uh, the soldiers, they knock on the door. Open. Ambram just opens the door. Hey, sorry, sir. We had a baby crying. And he's still crying. We had a baby crying. Sorry, he's not in this house. We'll go next door. They couldn't just get this baby. No, not this one. But Pharaoh was busy killing children and killing children, looking for this one. Then God said, okay, you are looking for him, I'll give him to him. Yes. Then they put Moses in a little ark. Mother of Moses put Moses in a little ark, made a little ark for Moses, and we know how she pitched it and so on. Put Moses in it, and it was sailing down the river Nile, all those 
crocodiles uh, that have been fed on Jewish uh, Israelite babies and uh, uh, they were there but the angels gathered around the ark. Amen. Amen. And it was sailing and sailing and sailing and it came right where the daughter of Pharaoh was. Before she could take a bath and the, 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 the security guards, they stopped her. They reached for this ark and they came out with a little baby and he started crying and when they looked, it's a Jewish child. But she said, my father killed all of them, not this one. You won't touch this one. Uh, God poured all the motherly love into the heart of Pharaoh's daughter. Then she took Moses and while she was holding Moses, Miriam stood next to her. Imagine, how did she get so close to the princess? What were the gods doing? But when God is moving, nothing can stop him. Nothing can stop him. And then Miriam said, I'll get you a nurse. Oh, is that so? Yes, I'll get you someone that will take care of him. Oh, go and bring her. Uh, by the way, this is the password. But she was standing there without a password. This is the password. She went, brought her mother, and the prophet says, God is full of those extra blessings. Yeah. Amen. Here yeah, is Moses' mother has been blessed with a child, but God gave an extra blessing. Yeah. She got paid for looking after her own baby. Yeah. And then she was right in the enemy's territory. She taught Moses about God without the Bible. Because the book of Genesis was written by Moses. But she taught Moses about God. Oh, God help us. So you realize that we have a responsibility and we have all the material. The materials around us to teach our children right. So may God, may God help us. Amen. And she taught Moses about God and you know, when Moses growing there, and you can imagine, just to go back a little bit, Pharaoh, he would go on his business for the day, and they kill so many and uh, Jewish boys, and he comes back, and uh, he is rocking this baby to sleep. <laughs> the very one he's looking for, yeah. right in his hands, but he can't find him. Yeah. Brother Brendan says in adoption part three, he says, God can seal you until the devil can find you. Yeah. There is Moses so hidden right in the house of Pharaoh, but Pharaoh can't find him. Amen. Amen. And he grew up in that home like an Egyptian. He did everything as an Egyptian, but mother was telling him, you are not an Egyptian. And when he was of age, he refused. By faith. What a gallant man. You know brother. He, he didn't refuse because he has seen the pillar of fire. No, 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 no. He made a decision before he even saw the first miracle. Nobody pushed him into it. Amen. It came from his own heart. Leaving the palace and by choice becoming a mad dober. And, and, and he did that and, and came out and he identified himself with the children of Israel. It was a wonderful thing. He killed one Egyptian. He messed the whole thing up and he ran away. He abandoned the whole thing. But, Brother Brendan says, when God made man, he made him to be a free moral agent. He says, when God made men to be in partnership with him. That is Christ the mystery of God revealed, paragraph 168. He says, God made men to be in partnership with him. So when Moses did it without God, it failed. And God couldn't do it without Moses. Because they are in partnership. So God had to go and find first his partner and bring him back. Amen. Amen. So brother, sister, me and you, we are also in partnership with God. 
That's why we should never start a day without prayer. Amen. You should not live your life without God because you are in partnership. Amen. Amen. We must have a conference with God. Every morning, conference. Every day, conference. Before we do anything, we must have a, a conference. You know, some of those uh, uh, partnership, it is uh, so and so and sons. So you can be in partnership even with your own children. So that's what is going on here. God is in partnership with his children. Father God with us in partnership. This thing is very serious. Very, very serious. God couldn't even destroy Sodom and Gomorrah without talking it over with Abraham. He's got a partner. He had to go and have a conference with Abraham and he spoke it over with him first. And, uh, the, the, you know, so... It, it, now, partnership is not... Uh, you are not an employee when you are a partner. No. As an employee... As an employee, you decisions are made and you must carry them out. You might have your own ideas, but you are not in partnership here. You are just a supervisor or a manager or whatever. But when you are in partnership, you, 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 you discuss things. You discuss. Amen. So Abraham said, yes, Lord, I hear what you say, but if there's 50, Will you still destroy them? No, Abraham. In our company, we don't do things like that. If there's 50 Russian people, we won't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because the 50 lives of Russian people there will stop everything. We don't work like that in this company, Abraham. So, you know, it's a conference. So, brother, sister, hey, God help us. You know, the message is so powerful. Just think of it. We, we are not just sinners saved by grace. We are not just, you know, just, just servants. We, we are in partnership with God. Till Brother Brendan says, God can never save a sinner until you project divine love to that sinner. It's partnership. Amen. When we have a bearing about somebody, then God will do something about that person. Amen. It's partnership. So, Moses, God had to go and find him. And when he found him, he was looking after sheep there. <laughs> and uh, God came and spoke to him. Uh, he said, I've come down. I've heard the cries of my people. Imagine people praying for 400 years. It's like the prayer is just hitting the ceiling here. But when God came, he said, I have heard their cries. No prayer that God doesn't hear. Amen. He hears prayer. He answers prayer. So, I've heard the cries of my people. I've come down to deliver them. But Moses, you go. So, he, he, he must go. God can do it alone. Moses can do it alone. They must do it together. So, now here we see God and Moses coming back to Egypt. And when Moses came, he told Pharaoh, I met God and he told me to tell you, you must let these people go. Who is God? Who is the Lord? You know, and, and Moses said, okay, I'll show you a sign. And he dropped the stick and the rod became a snake. Pharaoh laughed. He said, that's just a cheap magician trick. Janus, Jambres come. And they did the same thing. Moses has done his part. Now, God, the partner of Moses, did the rest. He, showed Mo he did something that, that Moses never saw behind the, behind the desert there. No, 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 at the backside of the desert. But then the snake of Moses swallowed Genesis', Genesis snake, Jambres' snake. And when Moses left, he had a rod. They didn't have rods. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it moved from one thing to another. Remember, he told God, I can't speak. But God said, who made mouth? God didn't just make him able to speak. He even spoke like his father. Huh? Father God in Genesis 1, he said, let there be, let there be, let there be. Amen. Moses also, he said, let there be flies. Amen. Let there be frogs. Amen. Amen. And there were frogs, so he's speaking exactly like his father. Amen. 
You know, election time is a very strange time. There in, in, in our countries, there you will find, you will see strange things. The big man, the president, he will go and go down to a, to a ghetto. Go to a, a you know, a small little place, no running water, nothing, and he'll be sitting there on a, uh, you know, uh, a little bucket, and he will be talking to someone there. It's just because it's election time. He has come there not to not for that guy to be the president. No, he has only come. His intention of coming there is because he wants to run for second term. Okay, he wants second term. So then it will be all over the place. But there's something about God. When God comes to you, He's coming so that you should be God. Yes. Yes. When He came to Moses. If you read Exodus 7 verse 1, he said, I have made you God. Amen. So when God comes to us, you become God. Amen. That's why he comes. Amen. So that you should become like him. You Amen. should become his child. You should become God. Amen. A dog gives birth to a dog. A cat gives birth to a cat. God gives birth to God. Amen. Amen. So he comes so that you should be God. You should be a powerhouse. Amen. So he came to Moses so that Moses must be God. And he spoke like God. Amen. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. He speaks it, God brings it to pass. What a partnership. What a partnership. Very powerful. So he moved from one thing to the other. It was wonderful when he spoke frogs into existence and all those things, but they were still in bondage. But it came a time when they went to service and Moses said, now, now, we are, you are going to go home and clean up your house. Take all the living out. And after you have taken the living, then bring the lamb. So all this time it was Moses, Moses, Moses stretching the rod, water becoming, uh, you know, blood and uh, uh, speaking this and, uh, you know, speaking the word and flies they come and, you know, bringing darkness on Egypt and all those things. But this time now, they must become part of the message. They must take the message and go and practice it. So they must go home. Clean up the living. We wouldn't have known what living is until Malachi 4 came. We, do, we wouldn't have known how to clean our homes. Amen. Amen. It's only through this message. Amen. So then the prophet comes and he tells us to kick the televisions out and all these ungodly things. We take them out and then we see that people, they once kicked them out. Now they're bringing them back. I don't know what's going on today. But it must be that way. We clean everything out. Televisions out and all the short dresses and the mini skirts and, the, and the, uh, the shorts and the cuts and everything and the beer bottles and everything out. So, that's how, that's the living today. Amen. It's amazing. That exodus never took place in a church. It took place in a home. In a home. That's how important a home is. Amen. They didn't apply the blood at the door of the church. No, on the lintel there above the door of the church. No, it was at their homes. They ate the lamb in the home. The prophet says the, the father became the priest of the home. You see, so as fathers we have to be praying. Amen. Praying fathers. Praying for our children. Praying for, you know, uh, for our loved ones. Amen. Uh, you know, we, we, we should be priests in our homes. Making intercession and making sure that we read the way to our children and so on. There is a part that we play. You know, you, you, you correct the children, you teach them the right things and so on. But there's also a part that God must do that we know. 
Amen. So we do our part the best we can. Then God will do the other part. Amen. Because you know, you, you may know scriptures, you may know all these things. That doesn't make you a Christian. The devil knows the Bible. He was quoting into Jesus in Matthew 4. It is written, it is written, it is written. He's still a devil even today. That didn't change him. Alright, so we may know the message, we can quote the message. and That's why it, it, it shouldn't shake us. Even when we see people living the message, it shouldn't shake us. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, it shouldn't shake us one bit. Amen. Amen. This is still the truth. It, it is not man who must witness to the things of God. Yes, no one witness to the, to the ministry of Moses but God himself. Amen. Even Paul says so. He said, God gave, bear them witness. Amen. It's written like that in, in Hebrews chapter 2. So the, there's no greater witness than God. Amen. So this message, God witnessed to it. That it is the truth and he's still witnessing to it Amen. by changing the people's lives. Amen. 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 So it, it shouldn't shake us. Amen. But what I'm trying to say here is this. We do our best but we know there is a part that God must do. Amen. Like the mother of Moses. She taught Moses the truth. She taught Moses everything about God. But she could not work in the heart of Moses. Only God works in the heart. Amen. Only God works in the heart. I mean, in that message, Life 1957, uh, Brother Branham speaks about that girl that uh, went to college and she was working there uh, uh, with a, a, a psychiatrist and how the psychiatrist sat her down and talked to her and uh, told her, girl, have you ever uh, been kissed by a boy? No. Oh, you don't know what you're missing. Have you ever... Uh, you know, taking a little bit of beer or this and that. No, oh, girl, you are missing quite a lot. And it went on like that. And the prophet said, she, him, him being a psychiatrist, moved her mind from Christ to what he was talking about. And she became evil and bad. When her thoughts were on Christ, she was a Christian. Her thoughts were moved away from Christ. Then she fell from grace. There the prophecy is. He goes on to say, that's what preaching is all about. Is to move your thoughts to something higher, to a place where Christ is. Until you are converted. So you see, preaching doesn't even work in the soul. It's working in the mind. We don't, we don't do anything in the heart. We don't do anything in the soul. Only God works there. Amen. Even the woman at the well. The prophet says the woman at the well knew the scriptures better than the priests. Yeah. So you realize that the preacher did a very good job on that woman. Yeah. She knew the Bible very well, but her life was a mess. Amen. But when Jesus came, Amen. he went and worked in a spot that Amen. the preacher never reached. Amen. 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 And from that time, she was never the same. Yeah. That's why we preach, we preach, we preach. But after preaching, we pray yeah. that God may come and quicken these things in our lives. Quicken these things in our children. Amen. I was telling my children, I said, you are part of what I'm doing. You, you are just part of what I'm doing. I'm preaching and you are part of this ministry. Though you are girls. You cannot stand behind the pulpit and preach, but you must be backing what I'm saying with your lives. Amen. Amen. Right. You must be backing what I'm saying with your lives. Uh, it will make things easier for me. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, we are living in a country that is just gone very bad. It's in Africa, but it's no longer part of Africa. We have uh, a terrible constitution. To a point that it's like a crime now to have children. Because you must just have them. Don't correct them. Don't discipline them. You raise your voice speaking uh, with them. They, they call it abuse, abuse, abuse. And uh, that's the only way they know now. There's nothing like discipline. There's nothing like correction. And, and, and it, it's so bad. It's so bad. Politicians are not honest. They never grew up like that themselves. Amen. They were corrected. They were beaten up. They, they went to schools that were very strict. 
Our schools was like uh, almost like the the military. You know, you you would get beaten up. You 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 you. you and with us, the way we grew up, any man that is as old as your father is your father. Yes. You meet that man on the street, you will be accountable before him as your father. Amen. You do any wrong thing, he will give you a hiding right there like your father. Yes. Don't you dare tell your father about it because you are going to get another hiding. Amen. He'll tell you that man can't be wrong. You know. Anyone, any woman that is as old as your mother is your mother. That's how it is. You know, but those are the, those are the values that we have. But because of politicians, those things have been changed then. And, and it's not good for our children. It's not good for our children. But in it all, we thank God for the message. Amen. There is something that can straighten things out. Amen. Amen. So our hope is not even in that. So... I'm not even looking at that. I told them, I said, I don't regard that. Amen. Amen. We don't regard that. We, we don't believe in that. Amen. We believe in the Bible and that's what we do. Amen. I, I, you know, it's so bad. It's so bad. The other day, a small little boy of about seven years was hitting a teacher as old as our brother uh, Rich here with a broomstick in the class. And the other little fellows, they were video videoing that with their little phones and so on and it was on YouTube and everywhere. And there's nothing wrong with the child according to that society. In my days that would be something else. That would have been something else. That teacher had a right to beat the boy up and if he goes home mother will give him another hiding big brother will do it and father will do it. He, he, he will never do that again. For the rest of his life, he will never do it again. Those things were good. I mean, I also had that. Yeah, yeah. And I realized, I tell the people that, you know, if I never had a father that, that did that to me, I wouldn't be a preacher today. Amen. I would have done very bad things and I wouldn't even qualify to be a preacher. Amen. But I had a dad who really disciplined me. I had teachers who disciplined me. And that made me what I am today. Amen. Amen. And I knew while I was still a child, I knew I was wrong. Okay? So, you must pray for us. Amen. So, I, I was telling the kids, even in our church, I said, no, 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 no. You don't do that. None of you must do such things. When you go to school, go on time and be a, a, a Christian child. You are there to reflect Christ. You are there to reflect Christ. Amen. Don't be part of all this confusion. Don't be part of this chaos. Amen. You, you, you represent Christ and, and you, you have respect. You show respect even when you talk to your teachers. Even when they are wrong and you are right. You still show respect. Because you are doing it unto Christ. Brother Brenham said, so your attitude to anyone is your attitude to Christ. Not your attitude to Christians. Your attitude to anyone. Amen. So, uh, we, we, we keep it like that. So, it's not an easy thing. Amen. But we know uh, greater is he that is in us than the one that is in the world. Amen. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, we, we pray. We, we hold on. And we thank God, you know, for the children that this message has produced. We really thank God. Amen. And for, for the ministry and for, for, for the churches. And, and we thank God for all that. Now, coming back to Moses. This Moses, we find that he continued like that. Amen. Because he's a son of God. He has to do things like his father. You do things like your father. One time, Jesus hanging on the cross, the thief on the left said to him, if you are the son of God. He was speaking like somebody. That statement was not made for the first time that time. The devil said the same thing to Jesus, if you are the son of God. So this guy also was speaking like his father. So Moses also spoke like his father. Let there be flies, let there be this. My, right in his own life, his father was reflected. So they had to take now the lamb, bring it to the homes, and uh, don't uh, boil it, roast it with fire. 
it all happened in the home. And uh, they applied the blood and uh, they, they came under the blood. And when the death angel was passing, there was a cry here. There was a cry there. Brother Brenham says in that message, Job, he said, it was an insult to be afraid when you are under the blood. It would be an insult to God. So when Israel came under the blood, no fear. Amen. When we are also under the blood today, no fear. No fear. It was a wonderful thing. No prophet, no lamb, no token, no deliverance, no exodus. Today, the same way. No prophet, no Holy Ghost. No prophet, no church, no nothing. So, mm, grace gave them a prophet, grace gave them a lamb and you know, when, and brothers and sisters, imagine they had to come under the blood. It didn't matter what sort of life they lived, so long as they are under the blood. When the blood was, where the blood was applied, you knew very well that there, the message has been accepted. Amen. Amen. And they accepted the message and, and they, they, they didn't just, you know, take anything that was popular. No. They took something that was an abomination in Egypt. A shepherd is an abomination in Egypt. But if the same man uh, changes and he heads cattle, he's not an abomination. So what was really an abomination is not the man, it's sheep. So what was not accepted in Egypt, that which was rejected, that's where your token came from. Even Jesus, when he hanged on the cross, that which Israel, the whole of Israel had rejected, that's where the Holy Ghost came from. Yeah. Amen. So even today, this message is not accepted everywhere. It's something that has been rejected. And from this rejected word, that's where the Holy Ghost comes from. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. the Holy Ghost follows the word. Yeah. The prophecy is the, the Holy Ghost is a conductor of the word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So once again, we see here, brother, sister, that this message, the prophet says, it's not it, but it is him, Christ, the lamb. So eating the lamb today is feasting on this message. And I read something that is very powerful. One of the, 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 the authorities of medicine, he said, uh, make food your medicine. So we don't just, we shouldn't just eat because of the taste. We should eat because we want to be well. Make food your medicine and make medicine your food. So, but we know most of these things now are contaminated. Uh, they are purified by prayer. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but when it comes to the spiritual matters, we should make food our medicine. We feast on the word to keep healthy spiritually. Amen. And we feast on the word to cure spiritual diseases. Amen. So as we feast on the word, we become healthy. We become fit. Amen. I tell you, you know, when you start the day with prayer, when you start the day with reading the word and so on, no matter what comes, you are ready for it. But if the day is a bit messed up and we don't start the day with prayer, we don't start the day by reading the word and so on, we are in deep trouble. So it seems like everything just keeps going wrong. Amen. So they had to eat the lamb. Amen. And they were, they were supposed to eat the whole lamb. Aye, 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 yeah. Ah, that's strong. Hey. The whole lamb. Now, brother, sister, right in that lamb, there is a gallbladder. Now, the Bible says, eat the whole lamb. And that thing is real bitter. Gallbladder, when we slaughter, you know, once gallbladder can spill on the, on, on, on the carcass, I tell you, there's nothing that can cure that. 
You can put salt, you can put all kinds of spices. The meat will still be terrible. It will be bitter. So imagine, they have to eat everything. You don't just eat lamb chops. You don't eat just, you know, the parts that you like. You must eat everything, including the gallbladder. So when it comes to the word, we don't just take parts that are so nice and wonderful. We, we must even take things that are against us. It was not easy, brother. It was not easy for Moses to say to the people, Thou shalt not kill. Who is talking? He has killed an Egyptian. He's a murderer himself. But did he change that word because he has done that? No. He brought it as it is. Huh? He tells Israel, You must not marry outside Israel. But he's sitting with an Ethiopian woman. He never changed that word. So it was not a nice thing for him, but brother, sister, that's the word. Yeah, he was not a suicide bomber. Because some preachers, they want to lower the standards because of, you know, our shortcomings, shortcomings of, uh, you know, children, family and all that. And, and sometimes, you know, because of membership and all those things. For so, so many different reasons, but Moses never done it. When I saw that, I said, Lord, help me. I preach it, I preach it, I preach it. Where I'm failing, I will go on the altar with my church. And I pray, I say, Lord, I've preached it. Help me also. Amen. Amen. So when we do it like that, then it helps all of us. Anyway, a pastor grows with his church. Amen. Amen. We are growing. We are all growing. Amen. Amen. All coming to perfection, all of us. Amen. Amen. So we, we realize here that they had to eat the whole lamb. My. And uh, they did it. And Pharaoh chased them out of Egypt. They didn't run away. He just chased them out. Now, I want to read something here. Let's just go to Hebrews 11. I will close in a short while. At least we have started. We will continue. This is one chapter that's incomplete. In the whole Bible. This is one chapter that is incomplete. I mean, even when we read here. Uh, Yeah, Paul says so. Let, let, let me read somewhere here. Verse 32. And what shall I more say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Japhna, uh, Japhtah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. Not a comma, not a full stop, hyphen. Still continuing incomplete. You see, these are heroes of faith. He can't complete it because we were also coming. Amen. We were also coming. This chapter is not complete. It cannot be complete. You, your name must be included here. Amen. My name and that brother, that sister, Amen. everyone. You can't complete this chapter. Amen. We are also heroes of faith. Amen. Amen. Incomplete. Let me say this. It's amazing. I mean, when you read this here, it says, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than that of Cain. Then it goes to Enoch. By faith, he was translated. It goes to Noah. It goes to Abraham. Listing different things all happened by faith. Not a different faith, same faith. Same faith. By faith, Enoch was translated. By faith, Abraham, you know, when he was old, he received Isaac. And by faith, you know, uh, Enoch was translated. By faith, by faith, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell. By faith, by faith. And Brother Brendan says, perfect faith masters all circumstances. Amen. Same faith. Different circumstances. 
right here in the book of Hebrews 11. But where we want to read is here. From verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was he three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. They were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So faith is a revelation also of who I am. So by faith, Moses knew his identity. It was a revelation. The Bible goes on. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt. Now, it doesn't say by faith they forsook Egypt. By faith he forsook Egypt. So Moses believed for the whole of Israel. And they left Egypt because of the faith of Moses. Oh, God help us. So you realize that my faith, your faith, must put us in. Amen. So I have to believe for my whole church. Pastor must believe for the whole church. We must believe for one another. You believe for pastor. I believe for you. Oh, God help us. So Moses in Israel, he was the father of the whole of Israel. The house of Moses was the whole of Israel. Brother, sister, imagine. He believed for their dogs, he believed for their donkeys, he believed for their cattle. He, he told Pharaoh that, he said, we won't even leave a wolf here. Yes, he believed for their animals. We are not leaving even a wolf here. He didn't just believe for them, he believed for their animals as well. Oh, God help me. What a father that was. Now, that's why Paul could say here, let's read here, Hebrews 3. Verse 1. Wherefore, Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. So the house of Moses, it was the whole, the whole of Israel. That's why in that message, thy house, Brabrandum speaks of, he read, uh, okay, I think we can read. We can read. Let's go to Acts 16. We read there. Acts chapter 16. Let's read there. Verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Hey, this is, this is a very touching story here. These men of God have been falsely accused because they, Paul cast out the devil out of a fortune teller, and they were put in stocks, the prophet said, there's rats in there, there was rats in there, there was all kinds of insects and so on. They should have been depressed, stressed. But, the Bible says, they prayed and sang praises unto God. God help us. Situations mustn't change us. No matter what goes wrong, brother, sister, there is a reason for that. We may not understand it, but there is a reason. 
So all we continue doing, praying, praising God and singing and so on. And so, even if you can't hold a tune, you must sing. Amen. Amen. Not only the singers must sing, everybody must sing. And the Bible says, suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's bands were loosed. The prophet says those walls were falling away from them, not upon them. My. And the keep of the prison, awaking out of uh, his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and uh, sprang in and came trembling, fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved and thy house. And thy house. So he must believe for himself and his house. Amen. Amen. So this man's house, yes, They were saved. The prophet, he took uh, those words there, thy house. And he he started speaking on that. But the house of Moses was not just all those of his household. It was the whole of Israel. And right in that message, the prophet said, I am holding on for every brother in my church. I'm holding for every sister in my church. So we had a prophet that believed for us. Amen. 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 Even in perfect faith, he said it. He said, come. I'm believing for you. Just come. Amen. 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 So we, we, we thank God. So that's the house of Moses. By faith, he left Egypt. So it happened by the faith of Moses. I mean, if a man could believe for two million people and their animals and so on, my home is very small. Amen. My home is very small. My church is very small. Amen. So you, you realize that we can believe for everybody in this message. We can even believe for those who are backslidden. Brother, we believe and we trust God and we continue to believe until they are brought back. The prophet says we don't give up on nobody. We give up on a person when he's dead. So long as they are alive, there's hope for them. Amen. Amen. So Moses believed. He believed for all of them. The faith of Moses took them out of bondage. Delivered them. Amen. The faith of Moses. Let's read on. We are still there in uh, uh, Hebrews 11. Verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover. It's only Moses all the time. And the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Now, verse 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do, were drowned. Now, that's Moses. Let's just close with another example here. Father Abraham. Amen. Uh, we read something here in Genesis 19. So we know Abraham took Lot, his nephew, with him. Lot never met God. He never saw any supernatural. He just heard Uncle Abraham saying, I met God. And uh, Lot was just following. He was there with Abraham. His heart is in Sodom. When opportunity arose, he went to him. 
to Sodom. There in Sodom, it was not good for him. One time captured by the kings and Abraham came after him. Abraham never said, you see, this is a vindication that God is with me. Look at him now. No, he went after him. Even when Lord, you know, left him, he still went after Lord and fought, delivered Lord, delivered all those people of Sodom and, and uh, you know, and after the, the slaughtering of those kings, that's when Abraham met Melchizedek. Melchizedek met a man that had such a brotherly love. Such a love for Lot. Even when Lot, the, 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 the shepherds of Lot, you know, strove with his own shepherds and, and so on. And he told Lot, we don't have to have strives here. You, wh whatever way you go, I'll go the opposite direction. If you go to the east, I'll go to the west. If you go west, I'll go to the, to the east. And Lot was given the best. Amen. He was given the best and he made his own choice. But Abraham still loved him. Even when time came now for Sodom and Gomorrah to be destroyed. Now we know three angels came to Abraham in Genesis 18. The other one remained with Abraham and the other two went to Sodom. It's amazing. Three came. When they were with Abraham, only one spoke to Abraham. The other two were quiet. The prophet shows that, you know, it was God. In one place he says it's God with Wormwood and Gabriel. You know, when, and, and, and uh, there they were. And he shows that these three angels, they are a shadow, or, or rather, yes, a shadow of what is happening in our day. There's only three seeds here. Amen. Pentecostal seed sown by Oral Roberts. And then the, the other seed sown by Billy Graham. And the other seed for the elect sown by William Brenham. Just three. Three angels came and the other two were quiet. And only Elohim was speaking to Abraham. Because the others, they never had a message for Abraham. Abraham needed a body changing yeah. message. So today, Oral Roberts, Billy Graham, wonderful people. But they don't have a message for me. Yeah. Because also in this day, we need a body-changing message. And the change must start within. In the soul. First. Amen. And then there it was. <laughs> and and uh, they came. Remember, all this time, Sarah also. She just heard Abraham saying, God spoke to me. Let's get out of here. Where are we going? In the book of Hebrews 11, the Bible says Abraham left and he didn't know where he was going. God just led him and led him. Where are you going, Abraham? There was no Bible. No, no, he couldn't show them. Here is a verse. Here is a scripture. Here. No, no, no. God just spoke to him. And he spoke to him alone. Sarah and them there just to follow. Now. Genesis 18, here yeah, God is talking to Abraham. He said, I will visit you according to the time of life. Sarah, thy wife, shall conceive. And Sarah was in a tent and in a tent. He was in a tent. According to 2 Corinthians 5, this body is a tabernacle, a tent. So we are not this body. The real you is your soul. So she was in a tent and being in this body also in a tent. I think that helps us with the, with the tent vision. <laughs> Amen. Sarah in a tent and this, five, this body of five senses is a tent. She is also in a tent. And Sarah, she was laughing. Oh, my goodness, today my husband has received friends that talk exactly like him. Because she was thinking, he is old, he never spoke like this when he was young. Now we're going to have a baby, now I must need booties here and all those things. She has never met, by the way, Sarah never met God yet. God came here in Genesis 18 and then 
Why did he come? To take away all the doubts and the unbelief of Sarah. And Sarah said, my goodness, what's going on today? And Abraham was rejoicing and, uh, you know, uh, he, he told Sarah to cook a special meal. And God said, why did Sarah laugh? She realized, yeah, I laughed in my heart. How did he know that? Then she realized, no, 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 no. This one is God. Only God can do that. Yeah. Not the ordinary man can do that. Amen. Then it just took one year, Amen. Isaac was born. Amen. So as much as we could say, Sarah this, Sarah that, but she never met God until Genesis 18. Yes. Then God remained with Abraham. The other two angels went to Sodom. Let's just read here Genesis 1, I mean Genesis 19, we read verse 1. There came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them and bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Hey. Hey, you can imagine the streets of Sodom. All the wickedness is in the streets. Yes. I mean, like, if we go to the streets of this city, yeah, that's all the wickedness is. You come to, to Johannesburg, in the house, it should be better. But imagine, the, what sort of a home is this that the angels don't even want to go in there? They can rather stay out there with all those gay men and whatever. Huh? There's something wrong in this house of Lot. So God must help us. We must have a home like that of Abraham. Where angels can visit us. Amen. Remember some of us will be raptured in our homes. Two will be sleeping. One shall be taken. One shall be left. Some of us will be raptured in our own homes. So we must make our homes. Make our church. Make our lives. You know, to be welcoming to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit must feel welcome. Now, but, let's just go somewhere. We won't stay long there. Right there in that chapter, there's something I wanted to read. We're just building up to it. find it just now. So we should have a, a home like that. Amen. The prophet says once you are a Christian, uh, once you are born again, you are associated with the unseen world. You are associated with the unseen world. Let me just look for it right here. I didn't mark it on my Bible here. There's a verse I'm looking for. Just bear with me. So it, uh, it's a wonderful thing to have a, a caring father like God. Yes, verse 29. Verse 29. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in the which Lot dwelt. Not remembered Lot, remembered Abraham. So Abraham was holding for Lot. So God remembered Abraham 
And he took Lot. He was holy, not just for Lot, for Lot and his wife and his daughters. Lord didn't want to go out. If you read there in Genesis 19, Lord didn't want to go out. The angels, they had to grab him, pull him out. Grab his wife, grab his daughters. God remembered Abraham. Took Lot out. Right, I think I'm done, but let me read this. Let me read just this quotation. It's just a blessing, this one. Amen. I know what Brother Brendan said about uh, 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 one uh, preacher's daughter in uh, respects. How, you know, he called her and uh, she refused to come uh, to the altar. Met Brother Brenham outside and uh, really spoke harsh to the prophet that, you know, I mean, I, I, I have my father and my father, uh, his religion, he kicked me and uh, this and that. And later he found her, or he met her, and she, she was real bad. She became a street woman. and I know that, but there is a middle of the road. Amen. That is the other side. But we are talking this side now, where you can hold on for your people. You can believe for your people. Amen. He says here in, the, in that message, thy house, 610808. Now, I've got my children. There is my little, jo uh, my little son, Joseph, and Billy, Sarah, Rebecca. Well, now, I want to see each one of them a worker in the gospel, doing something. I want to see them saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, I've committed them to God and say, I'm holding on to God for them. See? And I believe they are going to be saved, every one of them. See? I believe they are going to be saved. Now, I like this part. And I'll have them on the other side. I don't believe my salvation will save them, no, but my faith in God will do it. You see? My faith, believing God, will do it and will cause them to come to Christ. Amen. Says so I'll have them on the other side. Amen. Amen. So uh, this is scripture. It's right there in the Bible. Amen. So God can also remember me and Amen. pull my Amen. nephews. Amen. Amen. Remember me. Do something Amen. for a family member or Amen. a brother or a sister. Amen. Oh my. So brother, sister, we should never be weary. Amen. Amen. Keep holding on for each other. Amen. May God richly Bless you, Pastor. Wow.